Hi everybody, I'm your host John Iverson. I'm joined as usual by Marcella Munro, who is a principal at Macmillan Vantage, and Andrew Balfour, who is the managing partner of Rubicon Strategies. And so we're finally through the, uh, a grinding, divisive, totally pointless election. Um, let's throw forward though and look at what the implications are, because while I think that obviously the Commons returns in much the same shape that it uh, departed, there are consequences to what has happened over the last month. And uh, let's look at the parties in turn, the Liberal Party. I mean, Marcella, do you think that um, Justin Trudeau is chastened by this or is he unscathed and going to govern just as he did beforehand? Well, the communication I've had with people around Justin Trudeau uh, would suggest to me that they're, in, in the words used by those people, humbled uh, and ready to get back to work. So, look, I, I, I personally don't believe it was a divisive campaign. I mean, we saw those anti-vax protesters. That was pretty divisive. Um, but I think the case can be made that now, you know, they looked for a mandate. And so Canadians said, essentially, get back to work. And so uh, I think they have definitely solidified the mandate for some of their key promises, you know, in line with similar promises that the NDP were making. Uh, and I expect them to get back to work. But I think, I think if anything, the hubris we, we talked about at the start of the campaign in terms of the Liberals has been dialed down a fair notch. And I think now they're going to have to prove that to Canadians because I think Canadians said loudly and clearly, we didn't need this election. We're fine with the direction overall. We like the idea you don't have an absolute majority, so just get back at it. Andrew, does Justin Trudeau run in the next election, lead the party in the next election? I would say that's unlikely. I mean, there won't be an election for quite some time. I think that if I was calling the shots at uh, Prime Minister's office right now, I'd almost govern like I have a majority. The NDP have zero dollars. They can't defeat the government. The bloc have no interest in it. Um, like, No one's going to take you down because, as you just said, people were find this election to be pointless. I mean, I don't know if I agree with that. The there were some regional changes. I mean, now the Liberal Party has two seats in the West, as an example, and they had zero before. So the good people of Alberta, thanks to Jason Kenney, are now represented by two Liberals. Well, let's come back to him later. But, um, I mean, they also lost three cabinet ministers. So there has to be a shuffle, and presumably you put the, uh, the new MP from Calgary in cabinet too. And Edmonton. And Edmonton. So... Yeah, I mean, do, do you, how does that play out? Do we have a major shuffle or is it just basically plugging holes? I mean, you, you're going to put two guys in, uh, which then unseats the, the gender balance. So they've got a, he's got a bit of a juggling act, right? Right. But I mean, you know, if you go before we get into the well, let's do gender and regionality at the same time, there's lots of females to uh, in kind of call it the north of Toronto to replace Deb Schult. So there's one. Uh, so newly elected female in Nova Scotia who could replace Bernadette Jordan. Um, you know, you do still have the, like, we're talking about how they're down three ministers, but they're actually down four because Catherine McKenna didn't run again. Catherine McKenna, yeah. So, yeah, no, it's not, it's not ideal, but I'm sure they'll these make These things are always, yeah, these things are always tricky, and they're going to find a path to make that work. But I do have to chuckle that I start by saying I think they've been humbled. <laughs> And immediately Andrew's like, oh, they should govern like they have a majority. I mean, if they, <laughs> if they, if they do that, I think that they, you know, that that won't be good. So can they do that for a couple of years? Sure, I guess they could. But if they're serious about getting back to a position where they could see a majority government, I think even with the weak NDP, it's very, it's very problematic. I agree with you, Michelle. I mean, you know, it seems hard for me to see how Justin Trudeau runs in the next election. Um, with the aspirations of a majority. I mean, they lost a million votes uh, 2015 to 2019. They've not lost another million votes 2019 to 2022. That's a, that's a downward trajectory. It does not inspire confidence. To me, it was the Liberal brand that won the election and not Trudeau's leadership. So, you know, if you're him and you're looking at this, the, uh, you know, you, you want to build a legacy. You want to do some of the things that you've said you wanna, you're going to do. But... Uh, do you really want to risk the ignominy, ignominy of being kicked from office? So, you know, I could see him uh, being a little bit more humble and then bowing out before 
uh, and the next election rolls around. Well, realistically, we're probably not going to have another election for at least two years. I mean, I, right. I don't know what. I think that's probably true. I don't know why Aaron O'Toole was set on the 18 month thing, but Canadians right. clearly don't want another election. You raise Aaron O'Toole's name, so let's go to Aaron O'Toole. He is getting. Uh, pilloried from all parts of the uh, the Conservative movement. There is a petition to hold a National Council referendum that's got a thousand signatures. I guess none of that matters. It, what really matters is what Caucus thinks at the moment. Marcella, do you think he, uh, he retains the confidence of Caucus? Well, I could be wrong, but I think the Conservative Party has a leadership review after elections. Am I they have something on that? They have yeah. to vote on uh, whether they want to uh, take firm. advantage of Michael Chong's uh, Reform right. Act. Yeah. So, so look, I think uh, the, the days after a campaign, especially one that kind of ended the way this one did, are bound to be um, just a breeding ground for pundits and party insiders to be tweeting and gossiping and talking on background to various cons to various reporters and columnists. So, you know, it's, we're always going to have this kind of turmoil that we're seeing right now. Um, I don't think anything's landed yet. It's very interesting, though, of the, you know, sort of prominent conservatives and strategists I follow online. There is already an active debate on social anyway about, you know, were the errors of this campaign bad enough that we need a change again? Or is this a case where, like with Stephen Harper, we need to give him a shot since he did seem to make at least some inroads into shifting a little bit away from the conservative brand that was so damaging and so i guess we're going to see what we're going to see regardless of how the caucus is is reacting i gotta think caucus at the beginning is going to be calm they're not going to want to turf from right away but the broader party for sure this is going to be another soul searching moment for the conservatives and, and you know it's not great for them to keep having to rethink who they are all right what do you think Andrew? well we just talked about how justin trudeau's vote has gone down well andrew Shear got tossed uh after getting more vote than Aaron O'Toole did and two more seats than Aaron O'Toole did. So, you know, if that is what the Conservatives are going to base these things on, then he's probably done. Well, I think, I think if that's the lesson they take from this, then they've taken the wrong lesson. I mean, I think there, are, there is evidence that the, the um, strategy of going after blue-collar workers uh, certainly succeeded in, in Nova Scotia, for example three seats there that I think a lot of it was to do with, uh, or at least some of it was to do with policies about uh, EI sickness benefits and, and doubling Canada workers' benefit and, and things like that. They made inroads in Ontario by uh, increasing their share in Ontario. And I think, you know, the, the, ba the basic logic of going back to your true blue roots, for one thing, if you turf a tool, you've got to go through a damaging leader, leadership convention, and then whoever wins it has got to have won the party by being rock ribbed true blue conservative and then somehow they have to transition as O'Toole tried to do into somebody who can win a general election and it, that's a very hard thing to do to me as well the simple math of it is that if you take votes from the Liberal Party if you take one vote from the Liberal Party you're two votes up you've taken one from them and you've added one to you if you take votes from the People's Party the Liberal Party count is still the same so to me, O'Toole has made uh, inroads. They still have to do a lot of work with the ethnic uh, communities. I mean, you can't just give up Brampton and uh, Mississauga, if, especially if you're not going to win any of the 25 seats in Toronto, any of the 18 seats in Montreal, or any of the 15 seats in Vancouver. So there's work to do in the suburbs and, uh, and in the big cities. But uh, you can't detoxify the Conservative brand in five weeks. Well, I think that the greatest gift... Uh, that will be given to Justin Trudeau in the uh, coming weeks it will be the conservative infighting of trying to sewer Aaron O'Toole because it's going to suck up the cycle and people won't be focusing on him or his party. I, if I were the conservatives, I would use the reverse logic. Hold your nerve and see what happens in the Liberal Party because it's not going to be uh, a bed of roses. Nor is the NDP. Marcella, what do you think? Uh, I mean, I, I was with Jagmeet Singh for the last week. It was a, a total antidote and a tonic to, the, uh, to the, um, the rancor and divisiveness that I saw in the Liberal campaign. And watching uh, New Democrats bouncing around to uh, ready for the road was, uh, was my enduring memory of the campaign. But all that goodwill and all that uh, great campaigning yielded nothing, or it yielded one seat. 
I mean, it, they were very close in a number of others, but ultimately, in places like Davenport, they just didn't do it. Yeah. Well, what needs they to spent, happen? They spent $24 million as opposed to $10 million last time uh, for one seat. So, I mean, I don't know. I feel like, look, are they a very nice bunch of people with great values that represent, I think, a lot of values that Canadians share? 100%. Um, you know, is Jimmy Singh a likable leader who people can relate to? Yeah. But their inability to translate that into votes is is very, should be very disconcerting for the NDP. Um, and I think moreover, and I, I've said this on and off over the years, I've never really found that the federal party, except for possibly in the 2011 campaign, has done a very good job of figuring out during a campaign cycle where their opportunities are to gain seats. Uh, and they have a very difficult time in um, switching focus. You know, so you, what I've seen from the federal campaigns over the years is they tend to start with, here's our target seats. And then as the campaign goes on, they don't start to refine that based on what's actually happening with the numbers. Uh, unlike the other two parties, you, you just know that the Liberals and the Conservatives were every day adjusting to figure out where that next seat was going to be or where they had to hold on to a seat. Um, I'm not sure we could say the same about the NDP. And I think the NDP has a problem that we hear often talked about, you know, um, in the in the Conservative Party, uh, you know, that this was this should have been the weakest moment if you were going to make a case that the Liberals uh, needed to be replaced, both because of the election call, which people didn't seem to like, um, but also because of the personal popularity of Trudeau is, is so depressed. Uh, and yet, for whatever reason, the NDP couldn't convince those centrist progressive voters that there was a better opportunity. What, what do you think of uh, Jerry Butt's argument that progressives don't like other progressives taking shots at them? I mean, that seems a pretty self-serving argument from the Liberal point of view, and I don't particularly agree with it. But what do you think? I mean, I tend to agree with that. But again, you know, I have a very prairie New Democrat mentality. So on the prairies, and I've said this to anyone who would listen, when, when we're running for government, we'd say we're running against the government. And so that means taking on conservatives in the prairies, right? Rachel Notley would have gotten nowhere in 2015 if she had tried to say we're a better opportunity for you than the Liberals. Right. She she clearly said we can take on the Tories on their own turf. And so I think there is a bit of there is a bit of a truth to what Jerry's uh, proposing in that the NDP spends way more of their time and energy obsessed with attacking liberals as opposed to saying, you know, a vote. A, it's, it's not about attacking the liberals for the vote. It's about saying we're the better option if you want to vote against the conservatives. And that's the they, they never they have a hard time getting out of that that narrative that is set up by the Liberals that says it's it's red or blue. Well, I mean, I completely agree with that. All his stump was constantly just attacking Justin Trudeau, claiming that he had delivered things that he questionably did. Uh, I will fight for you, jumping around like, I'm sorry, like I'm never going to vote New Democrat, like let's be clear, but um, I couldn't take the guy seriously near the end, particularly when I'm watching his press conferences and you and other people are asking him questions and his answer is the same thing over and over again. I'm going to fight for it. Yeah, there, were, there weren't a lot of answers at the end of those questions. Just let's quickly wrap up. PPC, here to stay or was this uh, just a, a flash in the pan because of the, uh, the pandemic and, it, uh, and the anti-vax movement which uh, coalesced around the PPC? Marcella? I mean, I don't think we know yet. Obviously, the, the COVID stuff was the thing for them. But, you know, what was frightening to me down the stretch was that they really honed in on this message of quote unquote freedom and kind of managed to step aside from their, you know, very dangerous policies, in my view, anti-multiculturalism, um, you know, trying to get rid of public health care, all these kinds of things. And so if they're able to boom a movement around quote unquote freedom, I think that might be a problem for the conservatives long term. And I was also weirded out by the fact that they... They spent some money in my riding of St. Paul's, which was strange. Mm. That is in downtown weird. Toronto. Yeah, St. Paul's is a pretty safe place. Um, I think that the PPC is, and I'm probably going to get murdered for saying this, I think this is like Bernier and his buddy have set up this party where, like, I can't wait to see what their fundraising numbers are, but I bet that, like, this is almost like, seems like a business. Like, I don't think that – I don't even know if Bernie, like, believes this. Like the rebel. This. Yeah. He's, like, just, like, two dudes who are, like, raking it. They don't have a party infrastructure. Like, he didn't even go to his riding on election night. It's, like, two dudes who are probably, like, raking in money 
and making a pile of it for the, keeping it to themselves. Like, and yet he, yet he, well, let's not suggest he's uh, making personal gain out of this, but... Uh, he um, be. I bet he's getting paid but, well. But, um, you know, 20% the candidate in Portage Lisgar got. You know, this was not a uh, fringe party in many, many ratings. But anyway, I guess we, we, will, we will see how it, how it fares. Uh, let's wrap it up there. We'll come back again next week and pour over the, 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 uh, the entrails of the, the week after the election. Thanks, Sean. Thanks again.